Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our Tracy League show and this is our preview of the second leg of the UEFA Europa League first round qualifiers and also looking back at the first legs of those games involving Shamrock Rovers, Cork City and Derry. Josh, you're alongside me here. Um, we'll start with the game that's most you know, most alive, the tie that's still really in the balance, that's Shamrock Rovers after a 1-0 win away at Steinen in Iceland, Gary Shaw got on the 38th minute. And um, what you make of their performance and um, the result in general? Yeah, it's, look, it's never easy to go away. I mean, I'm sure Rovers would have done a, a lot of work on Sterling and the way they play and and that and that kind of thing. But it, it it's always kind of almost an unknown quantity going to these places and to go and get any kind of win and to get that away goal, keep a clean sheet. Rovers have done very well with the with the young squad they have. Yeah, um, I said I think last week in the video that I would have been happy with Wood one. Um, and I would have been happy with one one. I'm delighted with a one nil win, um, and away goal, not conceding. It's kind of you know obviously you could win three or four nil away from home, but a one nil win against a decent side away from home. I think that's big for Rovers and it's big for the confidence of those players because obviously things last year didn't go well against ROPS and um it obviously ended with Pat Fenlon leaving and it was a quite inexperienced squad that he brought over there and it's an inexperienced squad that Bradley is bringing in but at the same time <clears throat> how important is need a good performance on um Thursday against Stein and how important is Ronan Finn in this European campaign with the experience he's garnered through with being with Ralph previously when they got to the group stage of the Europa League and everything and then also with Dundalk last season getting yeah. to the group stages again, how important is his influence on such a young squad? Well, he's vital. I mean, he's the captain. And with so many young lads in the team and around the squad and stuff now, he's he's almost, I guess, even though he still kind of looks fresh-faced and stuff, he, he's kind of almost like a father figure. He's the experience. If you look through the squad, he's kind of between himself and maybe Dave Webster. They're kind of the two most experienced. And Simon Madden. Yeah, himself, kind of, Webster, kind of McAllister. There's a few in there, Gary yeah. Shaw, but... Even Gary Shaw yeah. isn't the oldest yeah. of players. It's kind of the lads coming up to kind of thirty now. Webster, McAllister, Madden, yeah. Finn. They're kind of the ones who. But need in terms to be of, lead. but in terms of who for players who have been there done that, it's only yeah. really Ronan Finn and Simon Madden. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Finn. Look, he's he's he should have he should be the happy of of the Rovers team, and I think maybe his, his season's kind of started and started a bit, and that's probably come with the injury he had at the start of the season. Yeah. But now he is. He's really starting to find form and. I think it should Rovers progress in Europe, he'll really, really show his promise and his talent and the value we show to Rovers overall going forward. And the type of football that Rovers play as well, they play kind of a possession-based style of football and they like to get the ball out to Clark to kind of provide them with width and then Mele kind of comes inside from yeah. the right-hand side and Burke and Mele kind of switch. Does that actually suit Rovers in Europe where if, if Steinen are looking at Rovers, they can kind they can't kind of pinpoint that right. He's always going to be on the right. He's always going to be on yeah. the left. He always does this. He always does that. That's kind of unpredictability to or unpredictability, um, that Rovers have with Burke and Mele. Is that a real asset to them in Europe? Along with the fact that they do play a bit of football and they don't just hoof the ball along to Gary Shaw and hope for the best. Yeah, not only that, but like, they can also mix it up in the way that they play in similar ways on both sides. I mean, I know you mentioned Trevor Clark there, but how many years have we watched Simon Madden go and overlaps and stuff down, yeah, you down kind the right-hand side? I feel like they've kind of created with the balance of the team where Clark provides it with the lift or the width on the left and Madden kind of provides you with that width on the right-hand side. Yeah. And Luke Byrne does come forward a little bit, but he does tend to stay a little bit further back. And Ryan Connolly tends to sit quite deep as well. See, a lot of the time, Connolly actually kind of covers Madden on the right. Yeah. And I think Bradley's actually worked that in. And it really does work for Rovers when it when they're in full flight. Yeah. Um, but then moving on to the second leg on Thursday, what realistically do you think we can expect is there going to be a fight back from a starting team who are experienced in Europe and experienced in coming from behind in these sort of games or are we going to see Rovers close it out and give their fans something to cheer about and have them all booking flights on their phone at half time to Boleslav well <laughs> one thing that could work in Rovers favour is is the experience of starting almost as in they might they might come to Dublin and kind of look at it as okay we're gonna sit back we're not gonna rush and get a go and then all of a sudden Rovers get a set piece and they win nil up and I think the tie is dead. Yeah. I think if Stan and get an early goal Rovers are in trouble because I think yeah. they might get a second and third. 
Yeah, Rovers' heads, I feel, could drop if yeah. they were to concede early. If they were to concede in the first, work. yeah, if they were to concede in the first ten, fifteen minutes of the game, I think the heads really would drop a little bit, and it would take something spectacular really to get them out of that hole. Um, especially against a team who are so experienced in European competition in the last couple of years, it's you know you look back at Steyn's European record and they don't have extensive experience over the years in Europe. But the last two seasons, they've made it to the third round of the Champions League qualifying. They've made it to the playoff round of the Europa League. So they're a team who know how to get far. And they know how to get far as an unseeded team and a seeded team. So they can deal with both ways and they are a good side. I just feel Rovers will be too strong for them at home. Rovers' home form is good. Rovers are very good, as silly as it sounds, in getting something like a one-all draw. They're very good in getting one nil up, battering teams, and then the other team scoring with 20 minutes to go. And that would do them on Thursday. It wouldn't be the most spectacular ways to win a European tie, but it would win a European tie. And that's, I think, the most important thing for Rovers is getting over that hurdle of actually winning the tie in Europe. Yeah. Um, so what would your score prediction be for the game then? I'm going to go with Rovers 1-0. Yeah, I'm going to go with 2-1 Rovers with a late winner. Um, we'll move on then to uh, Cork and their 2-0 win away in Tallinn against Levadia. Um, Gary Buckley scored a free kick in the 43rd minute Stephen Beattie with a second spectacular goal in the 82nd minute to really kind of seal the tie I guess with two away goals Tabby's obviously sent off for um, Levadia just a minute before Buckley's goal and um, kind of straightforward for Cork yeah very much so I mean look it's they're in a great position going forward now their, their midfield's been extremely strong they've got great depth in there and then and that's that stood for them here. I mean, Gary Buckley's been fantastic. I mean, his defensive great is phenomenal as well as a, his attacking talent. I mean, what a free kick he scored in that yeah. tie as well. And they just uh, the whole Cork squad complement each other real well from from Mark McNulty to Shani Maguire front. Yeah, and um, it was for me one of the more dominant performances I've seen from a League of Ireland team away from home in Europe in quite a while. Yeah, and they were exceptional. Cork just controlled that game for ninety minutes. Levadia really didn't trouble them that much. Um, Levadia aren't a good side. They were the top ranked C the team, um, in the competition. Or sorry, the bottom ranked C the team in the competition. And how to be honest, they were seeded ahead of some of the Irish teams and some of the other teams who were unseeded. I don't really understand. I don't really understand how the Estonian league um has a higher coefficient than the League of Ireland because. I can't actually remember an Estonian team ever getting to the later stages of even qualifying for the Europa League and the Champions League, whereas Cork got to later stages last year, Dundalk got to the Europa League last year, Rovers only a couple of years ago got to the Europa League, Dundalk have got close to it before, so have Pats. So the coefficient makes no sense to me in the fact that a team like Cork, who got, you know, were beaten by Genk last year, um, a tough team who got to the, what, the semi-finals or the quarter-finals of the competition, um, doesn't make sense to me why they have to be the unseeded team against Slovenia, but it doesn't really matter because they battered them anyway and showed why yeah. they should have been a seeded team ahead of a team like that. Um, so we feel like it's just kind of straightforward for Cork in the second leg, another easy Yeah, way. I think they win, and maybe even by an extra goal now. I think they'll, they'll, they'll put in a show for their fans, and once they, once they know they're okay at kind of half-time, I think, I think they'll kick on the second half and score two or three goals. Yeah, I'm going to predict... I'm going to go 4-0 Cork. I got three now. Yeah, I think it's going to be... Uh, Levadia showed me nothing last Thursday to really warrant Worry having any chance. Yeah. Um, and then they'll move on to... Cork will probably move on then to the next round to play Ike Larnica, barring some sort of madness to happen in the second leg of their game against Lincoln Red Imps. Um, but we'll move on then to a team who will not be progressing to the next round of the Europa League this year, and that's Derry, who are beating 6-1 in Denmark by FC Midgetland. The Hende opened the scoring for Midget Land in the fourth minute. Reese with a second one in the 15th. Then Poulsen with a penalty just before half time. Kroon with two more then in four minutes and the 58 and 62nd minute for Midget Land. For Ronan Curtis got one back for Derry. Then Cray finished off the scoring for Midget Land six minutes from time. Josh, wake up call for Derry. Yeah, look, it's, it's, it was always going to be tough. I think looking at the draw, everyone said. Look, it, it's probably over. Derry could have gone over there, sat back and kind of damaged limitation. They obviously didn't and they got battered as a result. And It's going to be tough for them now going down to Sligo. 
I I hope for the club's sake they still get somewhat of an attendance and make some kind of money from it. Yeah. But it, it it's it just every all of it just looks very dour for them. Yeah, I don't. I I obviously I don't see a way back for Derry and. I do hope, as you say, for their sake, that a lot of their fans and some of the fans from down in Sligo and stuff still turn out because it's European night. The end day, Midland are a good side and a good side to watch as well. So it wouldn't be, you know, the worst way to spend twenty quid or worst way to spend twenty quid in Sligo yeah. on Thursday night. Anyway, um, I do think it's really disappointing for Derry because they are a decent side, but. Obviously, extenuating circumstances this season have kind of taken their minds away from football slightly, and they haven't really regained the focus to the level that they really should have at this point. Um, at some point, it needs the focus does for them need to shift back to football, yeah. because at the end of the day, regardless of everything, Derry are a side who expect to be in the top three, top four, and at the minute. Obviously, the Bray situation is ongoing, and because of that, they will probably end up finishing fourth behind Shamrock Rovers, possibly Pippin Rovers if they turn it around. But as it stands, unless Cork, Dundalk, or Rovers, or if some miracle happens at Bray and Bill Gates comes in and buys them or something like that <laughs> and funds the club for the rest of the season, um, it looks bleak for them. So, would it be deemed a failure this season obviously Derry are now out of Europe there'll be no European run would it be deemed a failure of a season if they then didn't make Europe given the circumstances no but had that not happened yes but in saying that the FAI Cup doesn't start till August this year and of course everyone has a chance in that but just given the season that that's in and already I'm finding it very hard to look past Cork so um, for me, I feel regardless of the situation. Obviously, the situation is very sensitive, and um, I don't think anyone's going to lose their job over. It, yeah, no. I don't think Kenny Shields is going to lose his job or anything like that at the end of the season. But regardless of it, the way the league has panned out this year, and a lot of the results that Derry have still got, um, post Ryan's death and everything, I do feel that it would be a disappointment for them as a set of players and as a management staff and as a club in general if they didn't make the top three because their squad is good enough to make the top three. Players like Aaron McAniff and Barry McNamee and that there who are exceptional players. Absolutely some of the best players in this league. And it just didn't happen for them on Thursday night. Was it just a case of they came up against a side who know how to win in Europe? I think so. And I think... I don't know if they would have, if they would have gone over there with a little bit of confusion and in how to actually approach the game against such a big side and where they yeah whether it was to sit back yeah. entirely and try and soak up the pressure yeah. and Derry really aren't a team to do, do that they? either are yeah. they they like to attack like they've, teams they've they've got some great individual defenders don't get me wrong but as 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 a unit you would think of a lot of Derry's attacking flair players like the Curtis Patterson McNamee yeah. McInef before you think of any great individual stalwarts at the back, like do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So no way back for Derry. No. Then no. No. What do you think the result will be on Thursday? As much as it doesn't really matter. Three one Midland. I'm actually gonna go for two one to Derry. I think Midland might come over and maybe rest a few players and stuff like that because obviously they are only early season. Um. Kind of give a few more players a bit of game time and stuff and. Derry might pull out a win, which, to be fair, if they were to lose seven three seven four on aggregate, I know it's a lot of goals to concede. But at the same time, if you score three or four goals against a team like Midland, you're not doing, you're not doing dreadfully at yeah, that no, point. You're kind of you're surviving then. It would do the world for for their confidence as well. Going back into the league campaign as well, like I think, as just just touching on the league form for a minute. If they do want to make a European spot, one thing they're, they're going to have to do in some stage or another is going to put four and five wins together. And that's what they've yeah. been missing since the early part of the season. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, we're going to leave that there then and we'll be back next week to preview the next round of the Europa League games because it never stops with the <laughs> no, Europa League. It's like every week from now until May. <laughs> um, so hopefully we're reporting back to you with Cork into the next round playing Ike Larnica and on their way there. And Shamrock Rovers on their way to Mladen Boleslav in the Czech Republic. And 
Hopefully, Derry are on their way to uh, to Fair and Kavaros in Budapest. <laughs> like, who knows? <laughs> Stranger things have happened in Europe, but I severely doubt the last one. And um, make sure to check out our Bray Wanderers update video as well for anyone interested in that situation there, because there's a lot of moving parts within it. We had um, Cormac Byrne from the Daily Mirror who had talked to Harry Kenny um, last night, or sorry, just before we actually filmed the video. So he was straight from talking to the Bray manager and talking about the situation there and everything. So make sure to give that a watch on the channel. Be sure to give all the other videos a watch. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe as well. Uh, tell your friends about us. Let's get us more support. Let's get us more views on the videos. And we will talk to you again soon. Cheers.